talking about how to thrive as an empath. And today we are super excited about this topic. We're very passionate about it. It is how to thrive as an empath. Adam and I are both major empaths ourselves, you might have guessed, so... What is it to be an empath? Well, empaths are sometimes known as HSPs, highly sensitive people. Science has recently discovered that empaths have a higher number of mirror neurons. So it's really like a superpower of emotional intelligence of having the ability to try and feel others' perspectives. Due to the highly compassionate nature of the empath, it can feel like being a sponge where you just pick up everyone's energy all day long. So the challenge with being an empath is actually wringing that sponge out. So the issue is never actually building empathy, but establishing strong boundaries and an inner connection to your own soul connection to stay clear in your own reality You know that phrase that you don't know someone until you walk a mile in their shoes? Well, with empaths, the challenge is actually taking those other shoes off to be able to walk your own unique path. My first book was actually born from the ups and downs I learned on my own journey with the tools and examples from my own life. That's on my website, aliceromeo.com, if you want to dive into more of that after this show. It's an ebook. It's originally was titled Energetic Codependency, and it's now called Authentic Intuition. In this episode, we discuss what it is to be an empath and how to thrive as a super feeler. We couldn't think of anyone better than our good friend Stacy Barnes, who's a perfect guest for this episode. Stacy is a super empath, and she's a good example of someone who's done the deep inner work to thrive as an empath and a big, big feeler. She is multi-talented. She's a successful businesswoman of the brand Goody Twos, which creates delicious craft small batch toffee from her mother, Donna's famous recipe. She also has a travel and lifestyle website, Onward Journeys, and is a gorgeous photographer and storyteller. She really has that eye where she can seek soul out in a moment. In fact, some of our favorite photos on our website and retreats were taken by Stacy. So Stacy is good friends with race car driver Danica Patrick. In this special episode, Danica talks to Stacy to understand more of her empathetic nature and how to support that unique special ability as a friend. So enjoy. Welcome everybody to Holy and Human. Uh, we are continuing our conversation with Danica Patrick here and bringing Stacy into our conversation. Stacy Barnes. We are all kind of riding the high of good conversation <laughs> and good soul connection. We've been doing soul work all weekend. Uh, And we're just really excited to have Stacy here with us. She's one of our favorite people on the planet. She's come out for a retreat before and has been doing soul work for for many, many years. Uh, And has, and I guess I'll just, won't describe too much of that and we'll let you put it in your own words. So happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. So I just want to talk a little bit about how you first met your soul and what that experience was like for you. Well, um... It's interesting how we have things impact us in our life that um, break you open. And I was definitely at a place where things were feeling really uncomfortable. Um, But I wasn't, I, I, I had the feeling, but I didn't know exactly where to go or what to do. It felt really confused. Um, my husband and I ended up separating and um, I started working on myself and just just holding space for myself and finding out what is there and a lot of information started coming through and I was working with um, a very very talented body worker Dusty and she um, had been working with um, Elisa and Adam with both of you and as she was working through my body so I was seeing a therapist at the time to talk about 
my lack of self-worth when I realized I had lost that some time ago. Um, and then I started working with Dusty um, through my body, which is the energetics of um, so much of my life that I didn't realize that I was holding in my body. Um, and understanding that and how that linked up as I was talking, I almost would have more pain in my body coming out during that process. And yeah, so, you're so activating it as you yeah. brought awareness to it. I mean, it was, it was incredible. I mean, thank goodness I had Dusty to be able to She's help so that. Gifted. So yes. gifted to be able to help as the pain trauma was like coming through and asking to be released. Um, and through that, I mean, I literally my second time working with Dusty, she said, um, what about your soul? How do you feel with that? And I remember <laughs> and I was like, soul. Hmm. I mean, it just felt like so good. But I hadn't, I hadn't had the awareness to have communication with soul in that way. Um, and she mentioned that she worked with you guys and she just started, um, Elisa was coming out in a couple of months to do a workshop in Arizona mm -hmm. and, um, you were doing your book signing, yeah. meet your soul was just birthing. Yeah. And, um, so we went to the book signing and did the, um, it was like, was it a, just two days or one day? I can't remember. I it felt like it was two days. Yeah. I think it was. And, um, mm -hmm. Oh, that was it. Yeah. I mean, once um, I met Elisa and we connected at the book signing, yeah, even I before remember, the retreat. I remember that moment <laughs> so particularly because yeah. I just remember the whole thing, how it went down. Yeah. So that it was, was a, like five years ago yeah. around yeah, that. Yeah, a little over five yeah. years ago. You know, it's, it's interesting because when we approach soul work, a lot of people think this is going to be this blissful, loving experience. But a lot of time people meet their soul in times of crisis when things are falling apart. Yeah. And like we talked about in our last podcast about that identity shift, sometimes we meet our soul right at that moment where our old identity isn't working anymore, mm -hmm. where it's causing more conflict in our life than solutions. And so we're in need of an update. We're in need of getting in touch with the new part of ourselves. So I totally trust the orchestration that at mm -hmm. that point in your life, that's when you were handed this book that's when you start that dialogue. You're, that's it. You art mm -hmm. articulated it beautifully, and that's exactly what it felt like. My old persona and my old way of being was just no longer in service. There was so much more asking to come through, and I I could feel it. I'm very very sensitive. I'm an empath. Um, Elise and I have to. That's an do understatement. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you are the empath. <laughs> but I, I didn't. I hid so much of that from when I was younger because it just is very challenging to be, um, to experience um, anything from your childhood or from my teenage years in that way. And I didn't understand that I was feeling not only my feelings, but other people's feelings. And so it felt very, very, very emotional um, and, and confusing. And so I learned Can to kind of block it. you explain that for people? Because some people don't, when you're not an empath, yeah. it's weird to hear for the first time. Yeah, I really want to know because I don't think I am. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what does that you, mean? And I'm like, I wish I could just feel yeah, how you can feel felt right that. now. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, so what does that mean? How do you... How, what it's does it kind feel of like in words, but yeah. yeah, to to <laughs> feel other people's feelings in your body. How do, what does that feel like, and how do you know that it's not your feelings? How do you mm -hmm. discover that? Because that's the journey of the empath. That took me. Yeah. I would think I was like twenty nine before I like was really putting that together. Yeah, and I'm thinking I when when this came through for me, I was thirty six. Because most empaths don't know they're empaths. I, number one, I had no they idea. They think they're just emotional and yes. sensitive people, and they don't know this is a form of psychic information in your body that's mm. coming through as a feeling. Mm. Exactly. And the discernment is hard because I actually I'm like asked you a question. Now I'm gonna just like tell, start talking, but like for me, when I really put it together is. I remember my dad had a heart surgery and I, he came up to me and I felt the pain where, so it was like a stab in my chest where his surgery had happened. So that's like physical psychic information, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then sometimes if someone has back pain, they walk up to me, I feel like a stab in my back. So that's like on a physical level. Yeah. But as an empath, it's the same exact thing, yeah. but on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. So when someone walks up to you and they're having a panic attack, mm -hmm. And if they don't even know they're having, like if they're anxious and they don't even know they're anxious, you might suddenly be getting like anxiety. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, am I anxious? And it takes a while to understand this can be psychic information and that you have to kind of be able to discern, oh, that's not me. 
yeah. I'm, I'm accessing something, but then I have mm. to kind of like do an energetic separation, we call it, yeah. to move that energy out so that your whole life doesn't become being a chameleon and losing yourself and which is you know, something doing, that I hear people pleaser. your own energy is enough yeah <laughs> right yeah so There's like just like saving your energy on. right because yeah. <laughs> like you're taking on other people's on top of your own sounds like a lot it, well, it, well, it well, is not knowing um <clears throat> in my younger years and I'm sure I don't know what that was like for my parents or at least my mom um because I, my nickname was Boo Boo and is Boo Boo. It's Boo. And, uh, and my um, great grandpa would say, your tears are as big as horse turds. Because I could like cry so easily. And um, so I was all, it was always shown to me and I, I emoted. I could emote very easily, but I, people didn't understand. Um, and at the same time, as I'm so sensitive to energies in the room, keep in mind, I don't know this when I'm a child. And so what are you feeling when you say I'm sensitive? Like, let's say you walk into a room and there's some body with anxiety and somebody's like disconnected and somebody like, well, that's what, so when I was younger, I didn't understand. Um, I didn't understand what I was, I would feel emotion. That's why I would cry. Whether it was someone speaking to me or maybe I could feel, um, like an unspoken energy, if there's something happening, I'm just thinking of the, that young time when that came through, but like maybe my um, grandparents not speaking to each other, but everything looks really good. And so it's like, hi, welcome. You're coming over for dinner and there's a facade and they're welcoming you in, but I can feel, um, I could feel energetically there was tension, mm-hmm. but I, but I didn't understand when I was so younger. Your body, so the so tension your body actually tightened my, up. My body feel feels like a, it. A I, t- I take the, the, the feel on of what's going on in the room okay. and with those people. But I had no idea. That's what I just thought I was tense. I just thought yeah. I was sad. I didn't know I was feeling someone else's. So I didn't understand that. And then my teenage years, it really wasn't supportive. Like when I'm in high school, I mean, mm-hmm. I still don't, I just, then I started labeling myself as emotional and I'm not strong and I'm stupid and like all this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you do that, and then, and then I now, you know, I just started putting up protection, because you don't know, it feels really like you're not seen, and you don't understand, and then in my 20s, I got like, all right, I'm going to get strong, I'm not going to be as emotional, and I can just shut it down. work through this, and so I shut it down, mm-hmm. but I think the discomfort that came through, mm-hmm. um, that happened when, you know, we mm-hmm. met, um, and I started doing my own work is when that shut down shield that I had literally is like, I mean, that was my soul the whole time saying, this is not in service to you. You are not like you are protected by your sensitivities and your emotions and being an empath. And this is your gift. And this is why you're here and you have to let it go. Mm-hmm. And I was, I just, and, and things physically around me, you know, challenges in my marriage, challenges in my career, challenges with me not feeling that I'm being authentic to myself. All those things started showing up, asking me to, to break open, not just break down, but like break open, break open and just figure it out. And once I did, it was actually, a, it was quick. And once I just surrendered into that space and I needed more support. Like for you, it's really fast, Danica. Like you get it and people are there and it's like, which is awesome for me. Like I learned so much from you in that way, but I needed, it's like, I look at it. I needed my therapist to talk. I needed the body work to move everything that I was holding. Cause a lot of the stuff is from my childhood, but a lot of it is also, I think what I was feeling for so long, like Mm -hmm. being an empath, like feeling energies of Mm -hmm. everybody's emotions. Oh, well you said you'd go to Dusty and you were like, oh, I feel so, and like, I just move so much energy and I just like, you know, you cry sometimes and I'm like, what? (laughs) It's a massage. (laughs) Yes. I would have, I would have releases on the table and thankfully Dusty would say, you don't need to know what this is. You don't need to, like, what this release is happening. If I had an emotional release, which is, is what would happen when I would cry, mm-hmm. um, you don't need to label it. You don't have to think about it. You just mm-hmm. allow it to release. Nice. And you to feel it. You just mm-hmm. feel it. And I was like, well, I don't want to do that. So I'll just, and I was like, yeah. oh. And then, I mean, it was like weights lifted off my well, shoulders. Well, I say that because there are people out there that are like me who are like, I don't get it. Yeah. And then there are people out there listening that are like you where they're like, oh, man, I feel like that, which is totally. why I'm like, well, what did you feel? Because that's like, there's it's both people out there. So I 
And for the people listening, I and those people want to be more compassionate Mm -hmm. and understanding to someone who is so emotional and connected and empathic and take and takes on other people's energies. And then there are people out there taking on energy and taking on their emotions and all that shit going on that are going, oh man, that's me. Right? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's, so there's compassion for both. Yeah, exactly. And I, when I started doing the soul work is when for me it became union. So the... Um, from the talk therapy to the energetic body work, and then with my soul coming through and feeling her in that way, and that experience just was like, oh, it was, <laughs> it was so. It's like she's always been there, and I've always been safe. And I was brought back to that. She told me, t- she showed me times when I was in my childhood where I felt fearful, um, and and that she was there and 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 I was safe and I knew that and I just was like thank you and then everything started coming in and I started having clarity on being an empath and realizing I don't have to take on everyone's emotions I have the ability to learn how to have um you know Mm -hmm. sovereignty over my energetic field Mm -hmm. to like put up a protection in a way that's in love to choose it consciously what you're speaking so clearly about is the journey from being an unconscious empath to becoming a conscious empath and it's a hard journey to get there because it Society doesn't help us with this. We don't have a lot of models and teachers on this. And there's a lot of people. Most of my clients are undiagnosed empaths that are like, why is my life like so not out of control, basically? I'm burned out. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. Those are the top three. Mm -hmm. I'm medicating with drugs or alcohol to try to cope with all this overwhelming feeling. And it's what you're saying, which is basically once you get the soul connection, then it's like, I'm not wrong. There's nothing faulty about my makeup. It's I need to, I have a huge tool yeah. and it's a powerful tool. I need to know how to direct and use it. And if I don't, it will kill me. Mm-hmm. Like if I don't figure it out, it will be used against me. So yeah. it's important to figure yeah. out how your From tool people works. That, for people that aren't empaths, you might look at an empath like Danica is saying, like these two kind of ways of receiving and uh, experiencing reality. You might look at an empath and be like, why are you sad? You know, and the impact might be like, I don't know. it is, it is complicated <laughs> because that's an understatement because an empath is, you know, at least is talking about getting psychic information. But if we really think about that, if you're receiving just tons of different information, but emotionally through emotional nuances and complexity of emotions, it's like, you can't put that into words all the time. You can't explain that to somebody who's not an empath. And so I think that makes us feel really ostracized by society mm-hmm. when people are like, oh, you must be sensitive. And mm-hmm. you're like, no, I'm not sensitive. This isn't a weakness. It is just mm-hmm. kind of who I am and how I'm experiencing everything around me. But when it's a tool, when you know how to use it as a strength, that shit is so powerful, so especially powerful. in relationships. Just being mm-hmm. able to be like, I can feel the nuance of where you're still angry about you know what your mother said to you five years ago I can feel that emotionally in my body so let's like talk about that and work it out and so you become you create union with people true Mm -hmm. union Mm -hmm. and I think what the empaths give to the planet is just authentic connection on that really human level it's not like let's talk about the spiritual concept of love let's feel love right now in Mm. this moment at all times and it's like Elisa said it's hard it's a hard path I think that's why <clears throat> we are as close as we are, Stacy, and why we are have come to realize how soul contracted we are to each other is that I didn't see you, you saw me. And you, your soul knew it needed me on some level too. Oh yeah. Like you were able to hold space for me. you were able to recognize my essence, my the softness, the loving part of me that I really do have compassion for people, that I'm not such a cold-hearted biatch all the time. <laughs> like, you knew that. You saw right through. Yeah, I always like felt Like, the it. empath in you always felt that truth in me. Mm-hmm. And your soul knew you need someone like Danica. Yes. With, uh, which is strength. why you never take offense to my directness, which comes out all the time still. <laughs> well, we um, were talking about that yesterday. I'm grateful for your directness. <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful for your truth. Because I think, that's what I yeah. need. 
there's direction in that way yeah. that's mm-hmm. rooted. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. different ways about being direct. Mm-hmm. I think that empaths, so if you're considered a sensitive person, right, then if somebody's just like, I think what you're doing is wrong, that should, you know, theoretically, if we're pretending you're just sensitive, always affect you negatively. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is saying that from a totally honest place and you can feel the genuine, the genuinity in it and how Danica's really like, I want the most love for you too, yeah. you're totally okay with that. So I think the empaths don't value morals. They value the intent and the motive behind it's things. It's all about the intent. Completely. The, yeah. Right, yeah. Completely. And Danica's has always been. I mean, I'd say that that's Danica's superpower is her truth. Um, and that is you have the ability to see when people, um, like for yourself or with others around you, if it is, if you're not standing in your bigness Mm -hmm. and you can see that with people Mm -hmm. and you're just like, it's time to open more. I mean, I'm Mm -hmm. using my words, but the way you say it, and I know that I Mm -hmm. feel it from you, how Mm -hmm. rooted in your heart and from Lucy, Mm -hmm. your soul, I feel that and that's mm-hmm. always been there it's mm-hmm. been like this unspoken and as you and I have been on this journey as we were opening together and doing our individual work but coming together you and I continue to be shown that this is absolutely essential for you and me and our relationship yeah. and our sisterhood that um, I need the courage and the strength from from you and I also not only need like the the like to feel it energetically i actually need to see it in the human experience and how you do that and how can i apply that to me and then use that where it is Mm -hmm. in balance and help so i'm not because i'm often so private and it's hard for me to find my voice in that way um because i quieted it for so long but you've always been comfortable with how you just asked me to say more explain it explain it more to me Mm -hmm. so i can understand and you actually help me find my my voice. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I and don't you think... help teach me. You help teach me feelings. Like you help teach me to have compassion for feelings and for um, <clears throat> more love. There's like a bigger. It's like honestly, it just feels like a like a more more cracked open heart of love. Like it just mm-hmm. feels like there's a a certain level of being fragile even. Right, but it's like such pure. Right, it's so admirable as well. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that's empath's gift to the planet is Mm -hmm. reawakening the heart feeling in people and the love and their Mm -hmm. emotions and getting them in Mm -hmm. touch with the those inner realities. Mm -hmm. And I think a a huge misinterpretation of empaths is that they're weak uh, or fragile. And that's actually opposite. I think empaths are so willing to be challenged and so willing to do the work and so Mm -hmm. willing to self-examine so deeply and so integrously that I think that that's why you're okay with Danica's input when she's like, I think this part of your life is an unhealthy habit. You're like, okay. Like, okay, let's take a look. Let's do that work. I think generally in society, empaths are interpreted as like, you're just being hyper-emotional and that must really slow the progress of your life down that must be like these create these roadblocks and getting things done but empaths can be completely efficient in their self growth and Uh, empaths I think this is so important to say I feel like this podcast is going to go in the direction of empaths because I was like who better this is such you're actually because we've been wanting to do an empath podcast and I feel like this has been exactly here I'll reintroduce it here's Stacy the (laughs) expert on empaths (laughs) our number one empath yeah um I was th- so yeah, like what you're saying is like sometimes people think, oh, if you're an empath, I don't want to like bring my big emotions. But empaths mm-hmm. love when someone's just like, I'm angry and like I'm mm-hmm. full on just like with it and claiming and owning it. If it's it. honest, if it's honest, or yeah. if or if it's like I'm depressed, like I don't even know what I'm doing on this planet, like what I'm doing. Empaths are like, let's hang, let's hang with this. What we can't stand as empaths is when there's a disconnect between what the person's saying and their energy. And actually awakening retreat, there was somebody there who was scared to come. She's probably listening. What's up? I won't say your name. Um, And she has social anxiety because she's a very high level empath. And she was like, I'm not coming to your retreat. There's no way I'm going to come and sit in a room with like 30 women soul birthing. Like that's not happening. And I was like, I bet this will be a great experiment for you that your discomfort with social anxiety has less to do with just people being emotional and more when there's an inconsistency with people between what they're presenting and she came she was like came with xanax in her hand (laughs) to the retreat like she was ready you know because it was like a lot for her yeah and um she was like i can't believe how 
amazing. I feel in this group of people. I don't feel any social anxiety. I feel completely myself. Like there's such an acceptance in the room to just be yourself and everybody's just doing their own stuff. They're not like projecting on other people. They're just like doing their own soul work. And it was such a restorative and healing experience for her to be like around people. It's like yeah. that ugly duck and mm. swan thing of like, it's not that you are an ugly duck. It's that you're swan and here's your first time just sitting with swans doing swan work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look how different it feels in the body. And I like the idea mm. of doing swan work. Swan work. <laughs> <laughs> the name of yeah. Another. Well, and, and, be, and it's the next book. Yeah. <laughs> speaking from my childhood, my teenage years and, and 20s. Um, is I label, I would label myself. So I feel like my ego and my insecurities would come in and say that um, I'm not social and um, I have a hard, I mean, I do have a, I, I do at times have a hard time being in big spaces with a lot of people because I feel so much energy. Me too. But now that I'm more aware of it, I have, I typically, I, I'll have someone come with me that's really grounding. So mm-hmm. Dana comes with me or my husband's with me or mm-hmm. you guys, you know, I mean, I cultivate mm-hmm. kind of what I lack. Like I, do you um, do any other tools? Cause that's helpful to people. Like if you're going to like a big game yeah. or for me, that's like a place where I can be like, Oh my gosh, I take bathroom breaks. I'll go to the bathroom and I'll like take a breath, connect with my soul, do like energy separations, like or at a wedding or funeral when things are emotional. Do you mm. ever do that? Because I can see you probably mm-hmm. really crying or connecting that. in. So yes. like, yeah. Um, it's all, I, for me, it's all about breathing. And, and when I notice the feeling to not go into my negative self-talk and let the ego control that, and just, um, well, now I connect with Ellie, my soul, and she's just like, you're all good. Just breathe. She'll give me whatever guidance it is. Sometimes it is you need to take a break or mm-hmm. a lot of times because I'm a community, like vocalizing is important to me and I'm with people who I feel safe with. So I would say to Danica, if I'm with you, I'm a little nervous about this. Um, if we're going to a game or a concert or something, or just, you know, if you end up leaving, I might want to go with you or, and I just vote and she's like, gotcha. Okay. And just w- knowing that. So even vocalizing, if I'm feeling something, um, that helps when I go in and then I feel more grounded. And, uh, but if it's, if it's happening during an experience like that, when I'm in it and I haven't said anything, it's, it's always just pausing, yeah. taking a breath, feeling what's coming through and then, um, releasing because if it's fear, um, the fear can dominate me. And, and this is my own stuff. It's not even feeling other people. This is my own just experience of kind of not understanding it from when I was younger. So kind of preconceived ideas. That's a great example of the separating between trauma, PTSD kind of energy Mm -hmm. versus receiving information in the moment. And then like, okay, this is a trauma thing. I have to kind of address and work through and clear. Yeah. And so just breathing. So does does vocalizing, you said that can help feel better. Like telling me like, Hey, we're going here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm really like in the space where I can feel like that's a something, a space I can hold. Mm -hmm. And is it that you've alchemized the situation to, now like somehow by saying it you've let it flow out of you like you've taken the taken the pressure the tension the anxiety and you've like rid yourself of some of that by getting the words out because i think there's there's a or yes. mind, it, that. it could and also be self-acceptance just i was knowing, gonna say, yeah. I was gonna say the be conscious seen. that's the mm-hmm. unconscious empath to the it, conscious yeah. empath i'm like yeah. i am an empath <laughs> i will be kind of I'm reminding you <laughs> i'm an empath and yeah, i'm reminding myself i think yeah. that's the main thing because yeah. empaths it's like yeah I, okay. I know i'm an empath but i literally still so that would be the forget. second part yeah. is the did you is it just because it helps you feel seen then where it people does. go, oh, yeah, okay. And that way you also then have permission if you do hit some point in time yep. where it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Where we go, deep. well, Stacey said before we came here, like, she was, like, not really feeling it anyway. So she's just off. You don't have to be embarrassed. You don't feel uncomfortable. So it's being seen, and it's also kind of getting some of that tension out. Exactly. I'm, I, I, I'm being seen. I'm getting the tension out. And I'm also owning it and not feeling ashamed mm. or guilty or mm. less than. Because, again, like I have my own mm. negative self-talk mm. around all of that mm. as labeling myself from when I was younger, not understanding. And I and love now, what you're saying, Danica, because I'm thinking, yeah. I never think of it like this, but what you're basically saying is how if I'm a friends with an empath can I be a yeah. better friend yeah and I've like never even thought of that as like a topic or, or and I how feel is like you that's... as an empath can you lean on your friends yeah and then I'd say if you're with the right friends they hold that space for you and they yeah. go oh, okay cool or they're or the ones that maybe aren't are like well maybe you just shouldn't come then I mean if you're gonna bring <laughs> us down then don't come and you're like whoa shit maybe you're not my friend 
you know, you'll, 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 you weed them out pretty quickly based on their reactions. They either support you yeah. and hold that space and or for someone who's not an empath that doesn't even know what hold space means, they might just understand. Yeah. And you go, oh, okay. And, and then you, you feel can tell, Danica, you can tell when I'm not speaking my truth or if I'm, if I'm um, tiptoeing, if I'm being too fluffy with things because mm-hmm. I often soften the way I speak as I'm, you know, learning to speak more with intention in my authentic voice. And um, you've said to me for a while now, um, use your words. Use your words, right? You know that. <laughs> yeah. Now you'll for... be sitting there and I'll say something and you'll be like, so, and I'm like, just say it. Use your words. Come on. Like, yep. And you stop call... thinking about it and just say it. I, do you want me to Let I mean, Ellie, you... your soul, come through. Yes. She has the words ready to go. Yes. Get out of the way. I don't care if you raise your volume. I don't care if you start yelling. Yeah, because I you love can, it. Because you can take it. So, yeah. you, so, and I don't, I feel comfortable being strong and myself in that way with you, just as you feel comfortable being your way with me mm-hmm. and sharing the truth. And it's fascinating for you and me how that is essential. We are so and it's different. Continuing. <laughs> I know, but, but I mean, I look at that when it's like you so use needed. your words and normally if someone else would say that to me, I might like <laughs> attach something to it. Like, Ooh, or I don't know. I would, I would, well, you can feel the intention. It, yeah. it, right. The intention of it. And is that, like, is no, that, really, a, is that a judgment? <laughs> I'm not being passive aggressive. Right. Or anything. It's really like, it opened yeah. a wound of mine because that's why I became quiet because when I would use my words, sometimes I can, be emotional or whatever, yeah. whatever it is. So dep- the intention, what Adam, what you said, I feel your intention, Danica. It's always been pure. Mm-hmm. It's always been aligned. And mm-hmm. it's all, so when you say that, mm-hmm. nor I, I mm-hmm. don't retreat mm-hmm. into my turtle shell. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, she wants me to stretch and to yeah. expand and get out of my comfort zone. You've done that the you, whole relationship. I would say that like learning, because I am learning about this. You're helping me know Stacy better and know any empath that comes along better. Also, being able to possibly identify some that might not know they are. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Is, uh, I would say you guys, an empath, are just, you're just more more in touch. Yeah. It's well, different. I, would, yeah. I was just saying, do you want to do any, like, Myers-Briggs, on, just saying what is going on on like, a so Myers-Briggs proud, level? I'm saying. Be proud. Because... Well, we're all different, you know? So, uh, I would say... You can't say that an empath is more highly involved than somebody else in the way they get information. And that's kind of why we love soul journaling, because I think it applies to all types, any way you receive information. Mm -hmm. So actually, instead of talking about Myers-Briggs, what I talk about is the different clair senses. Mm -hmm. So some of us are clairaudient, in Mm -hmm. which we will just receive information, like a sentence in our head, like it's a hunch. And I think a lot more people are clairaudient than they think they are. Mm -hmm. They'll be doing their day, and then they'll just get that sentence, you know, like... My husband's going to be late today, home from work or something mm-hmm. like that. Buckle your seatbelt. And then, belt. yeah, <laughs> d- dismiss it or something like that. And then some of us, I would say uh, empaths. So there's Claire audience, there's Claire... Uh, voyant. It's voyant. Claire seeing. If Claire voyant is images. when you get an image in your head. Uh, and But there's Claire sentient, which is when you start having... Uh, feelings in your body mm. so I'm I'm more that way than Second Elisa chakra. is so Elisa is clairaudient in the way that she'll just receive information where I'll receive a feeling mm-hmm. and then it's up to me to decipher what that feeling means which oh. is difficult and I think I mean, that's what's the challenge of being an empath is the feelings are complicated so if somebody's like like with Danica where you're saying use your words you're like but uh, what are my words? I have to do this deep dive to really figure out mm. what I am feeling, but it's super healthy to do that because once you do do that, you get access to the true information you're really receiving. Mm. And I Another learned how to vocalize, mm-hmm. um, so you're exactly right because, and I'm sure that you've, hearing that where I might stumble, does that sound familiar to yes. you? Yes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> just checking in on that. So thank you for uh-huh. bringing this into terms because uh-huh. I, Danica has experienced it. I have experienced that feeling of, Okay, use my words. How do I? And um, and because she waits and allows, and and yet I feel her fire, her intensity. It it almost like musters and and, and cultivates a strength from within to where I am able to use. And so I, and, and and yet I'm clear to make sure I'm doing this like all connected. Yeah, energetically, um, she's saying to you like, you got this. You you've can got do that this. and giving that yeah. energy. Yeah, and then I wouldn't be able to even be speaking honestly to you guys right now and sharing this way as openly because without 
that without learning how to use use my words to vocalize what I feel and it's hard to articulate our feelings yeah. and what, what's coming through. But And just a little you. plug for soul mm-hmm. journaling. Every time you practice soul journaling, you're building the fifth chakra ability to translate totally. from second chakra up to fifth chakra. So you're building that muscle. You're going to the gym every time you soul journal for empaths listening who are like, how do I use my words? Yes. It helps bring all that up and then into the, the ability to hear it from your soul. So what I'm it. curious to try, just to bring this point a little bit further, is in our last podcast, if you listen, Danica took a moment to talk to her own soul. <laughs> and so she did this dialogue, and if you go and listen to that, it's very, uh, what's the word? Direct. Cut, direct. It's just, it's just, okay, soul, here's the information that's coming through. So Danica probably has more clear audience mm-hmm. uh, abilities where mm-hmm. just the information is just right there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've also noticed that with working with you where mm-hmm. if you make the intention to turn your perception towards soul, the mm-hmm. information just comes. Mm-hmm. So that's more of like a clear audience feeling. Mm-hmm. But right now, if I turn to Stacy and we start connecting to your soul, so let's just for a moment check in with Ellie uh, and you can close your eyes and take a breath and just connect to the feeling of her. And then how do you first experience her? I said, I, I didn't mean to put words into your experience by saying feeling, but that was my guess. If you connect to her first, how do you experience her? Uh, Ellie is a feeling. <laughs> so <laughs> empath to empath, her. Adam, you yeah. are spot on. Yeah. Um, yeah, she, she, she is, she's a, an effervescent feeling. It is a lightness. It is, um, an error. It is, is she's, she's, it's pure. She's pure love. Yeah. That's beautiful. So what you did is you had the <laughs> feeling, the sensory experience of that, and but then you had to translate that into words, mm-hmm. and that's where you got the information. So it wasn't like the oh, information came first. That's the pause. And then you had to that. That's the pause. Yeah. So you, the other day we we're talking about as we we're all working together how uh, introverted feelers are empaths. Uh, they can sometimes they often are the same. Uh, Introverted feeling is a Myers Briggs He's talking term. about Myers Briggs, yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, uh, opposed to extroverted feelers, usually put their feelings out first. But uh, introverted feelers will do this thing where they pause first and check in with themselves and look. And it's this internal perspective of let me dig down and search for what am I really feeling, mm-hmm. uh, because again, that's complicated. And then pulling that up to the surface, and that's mm-hmm. a hard task. The mm-hmm. pull that you know mm-hmm. from the depths of yourself up into the surface, but is probably the number one work for empaths. The only thing um, I want to say about Myers-Briggs, so just because some people <laughs> might not know this, is that in terms of the T or F function on Myers-Briggs, thinking, feeling, um, not all feelers are probably empaths, but I don't think if you're a true empath, you're not an F on the Myers-Briggs. Would you that agree with that? That may be true. Got yeah. it. So, and that doesn't mean T's aren't intuitive. These yeah. are very intuitive. It's just the clear abilities. It's what and way mean, are uh, you receiving? Tees don't feel. Yeah. So what Elisa is think talking and thinkers about feel, of yeah. course. Yeah. But it's we're talking about the orientation of your reality and how you're dominantly making most of your decisions. And yeah. Uh, how, you yeah. can probably speak to that. If you if but. you go back and remember your high school experience, you probably remember taking a Myers Briggs type because I think most high schools at some point do that. No, <laughs> I never mind. G- I, have I, a, I, that. I have a no. GED, so yeah. I didn't really finish. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't finish high school either. We so. might live in a weird place. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the two wrong people to hear that question. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm assuming. I'm most, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> most most people take the Myers Briggs as you answer a series of questions and they kind of type your cognitive functions, which is your way of receiving reality, making judgments on reality, and making decisions in life. And so usually how this test goes is they kind of will suggest career options. They're like, oh, you know, whenever I take it, they're like, you could be a counselor. And I'm like, well, no shit. Uh, <laughs> and a musician. And a musician. Yeah. Uh, and But that is based off, what they're doing is they're figuring out how your brain wires, and then they're making conclusions on what might be a good fit. It's not always a good fit. So they're based, they're assuming the behavior that might happen once they figure out how your brain is functioning or personality is functioning. So the T versus S difference, uh, F difference is that part of us of how we make decisions. Do we make decisions from a rational place that's like this makes the most sense? Or do we, make, or do we turn, in, uh, turn our perspective internal, feel our feelings, and what feels right? Mm. And that determines so much of how our lives mm get orchestrated yeah. or how we move forward is because if we're making decisions all the time of how what feels right uh 
you know, there's there's so many different consequences from that of what is the most logical. <laughs> the yeah. most common way for Stacy to re- to respond to making a decision is she goes, I'm going to feel into that. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's such time. a real... Like, hey, do you want to go on this trip? She's like, you know, let me feel into that. I'm like, do you want to go or not? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm getting there. And that's such a, actually a good example because there's such a process that happens. Can you talk about... I know that might... It's hard to put into words... But, I have um, a lot more patience, though, right now, because I'm like, yeah. wow, it is, is effort it? to think, take, yeah. like, how do you articulate, like, an emotion mm-hmm. and translate that from, mm-hmm. into the human, the human exactly. realm of words, mm-hmm. and we don't even have enough words to be very descriptive in our language, I don't think. I'm pretty sure about every other language has, like, more, way more descriptors for every word. Like, yeah. there's way, yeah. you can be much more specific than English. But yeah, I can understand why this takes a minute because you have to translate. There's a psychological. Yeah, I feel you getting that. I feel you. I just I love like, it. Oh, I feel like this is gonna be a game changer. Stacy, yeah. Stacy, kind of <laughs> takes a. But I also want you to know that we've been friends for a long time. So to honor the fact that though maybe it feels like you're like you're wanting more, um, you have held space for me to do this. You allow me to say I need to feel into this. You mm-hmm. might ask, well, what are you feeling into? Mm-hmm. Because you will, you know, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. that's where it, so it's mm-hmm. important that you know that mm-hmm. because I see you getting it now. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, it makes so much more sense. Mm-hmm. And but I, you naturally have, I feel your soul's always has helped soften that mm-hmm. part to allow mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. And Danica doesn't do this, but for people listening out there, what often happens with this is family members or friends who don't get it say things like, I think you're posturing. I think you're just trying to sound like a spiritual person. I think you are just trying to sound like some spiritual guru, and that means nothing. Yeah. Because they're projecting the reality of, like, if they were to say that, it would be that. It would True. be that meaning nothing yeah. and posturing. True. But then this is the empath's best attempt at trying to actually speak the truth of what their experience is and how they're going to get to yeah. what works mm-hmm. for them. Yeah. Mm. So what is it like when you feel into something... If, I know if that's a weird question. I mean, no, it can no, also no. be super simple. Like, hey, Stacy, let's pick a place to go to dinner. Do you want to go out for, like, do you want to, like, go to uh, sushi? Or do you want to go, or should we, like, go into town and, like, really so go out So when Adam and fun? I have that question, <laughs> what we're doing psychically is feeling into the energy at that moment at that restaurant. Psychically, who's going to be oh, wow. at the restaurant? Next level. How we feel in our relationship yep. of our body within that restaurant. Yep. And what's most likely to occur. And then we'll psychically look at different restaurants of where is the best emotional yes. and energetic experience. So it has so little to do even with like the food I'm craving, although that's a factor. <laughs> and it's so much, particularly me more than him. But <laughs> it's all of this because we're going for an, an emotional experience uh-huh. and like a feeling of being ourselves within that experience Uh so it is like uh because i want to say that because it can be that simple like this isn't like hey i'm trying to decide if you know i I should take this new job or should i marry this person this is where should we go to dinner right right so what happens then well for me um using my tool as being an empath as a gift and my feelings is shifting what i've done for so long in my people pleasing and my control and my perfectionism and not answering from my head space That's or great. versus yeah. what is going to be in service to those around me or what does Ooh. danica want what does my dad what will make my dad comfortable cuz i'm yeah. and you get yeah I was, she's not yeah. she gets it so so first when I literally like I that allows that gives me permission mm-hmm. to pause and to feel mm-hmm. and to not go from my initial reactionary way, which, which is how might I be codependent, be. maybe. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's a chance to break the codependency. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Then when I feel into it, then it's a longer process. Yeah. I go into that. How do I I check into how I feel, I check in to what food. Sometimes I get clear stuff where it's just like, well, you're not really feeling like any type of food, so just ask Danica because she can. Like, what do you feel like? Oh, I feel like having fish, and I, and then and I check. Yep, okay, let's go there. So it's it just takes me a minute yeah. to make sure that I'm that I'm coming yeah. in from the space. That and I love to speak about what you just talked about because I think so many empaths will relate to that because if you're an empath and if you're feeling everything all the time and you're navigating your whole life by feeling. It can be really hard to say no to somebody because if you know you're going to upset somebody (laughs) emotionally, then then you're like, I don't want to experience that that icky feeling, that, that discomfort, that terrible feeling. 
but I'm going to have to if I set a boundary up right now. So you already know that you're setting yourself up for a difficult emotional experience and you have to do it anyways. Yep. And that's why I think the soul dialoguing is so important for empaths so out there. So important, yeah. Because if you're just doing what, so I, I would say the shadow of being an empath or being on the Myers-Briggs of an F that can come out sometimes is that you make choices of what feels good uh, sensory, emotionally, opposed to what is right for you. Mm-hmm. But the benefit 100%. is once you start feeling what feels true to you, what feels authentic to you, then you've got it. Then you know exactly what you need yeah. to do. You don't and have that. I think, that. So, I think that's so going to come quicker yeah. for as I've been, I've really been working in this the last two years, being aware of it, just being super conscious and seeing how um, the shadow side of being an empath and, and from my childhood and things like that where I've, brought on the codependency. And if you're an empath, you basically are very likely to struggle with codependency because it's almost impossible to be an empath and to not have codependent behaviors because you're so aware of what everybody's wanting and needing all the time. Yeah. And that's something that if you're a T on the Myers-Briggs or something, it's not, that. that's like a foreign thing. That's like, what? Why would you even you know, just focus on yourself. But, yeah. and empaths are like, I'm trying, you know what I mean? Like yeah. where it's like, I would love to be able to do that. And I'm working so hard to be able to do that. And it's like, you don't want to have to shut down and lose your gift and your mm-hmm. skill. So that's the hard part is like, how can I retain the beauty of this gift without, I would say it's a gift and a curse, right? Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, it can really be either. Yeah. And I see it's just so undiagnosed mm-hmm. and there's so many people struggling with this topic that don't know their empaths. And once yeah. that's why for, for a lot of people, it's like mm-hmm. game changer because it's like, oh, this is why I've been, you know, just shutting down, clouding, like, people pleasing, all the codependent stuff. So and going down I'm all so glad we talked about paths. codependency in wow. this topic because it's like you can't How almost like not talk yeah. about it. It must be so easy to lose yourself. It is. And I used to feel like a chameleon. Did you ever feel, did you feel like a chameleon? Is that something you felt like identified as? Because I oh, remember feeling yes. like I change yes. based on who I'm around. So am yes. I a phony? Am I false? And yes. then I realized, oh, no, this is – it took me a long time to understand like – oh, what I am is behind all the changing empath stuff. But also that's a gift. But also if I only identify as the changing, then I'm like a lost soul who like doesn't have any kind of like grounding and yeah. truth and connection. You just care too people. much. That's all. Yeah. You just care too much. <laughs> it really kind of, it is a lot of that. It is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I think, you know. I mean, that would be my really yeah. rash way of saying, yeah. like, oh, just care less. It sounds so easy, but it's not. There's such an emotion. Like, you feel it in your body. We were thinking, it's Danica, I don't know if we probably. talked about this yesterday, but I said last night, I think Danica's a T. I don't know what we had said when you came in, but then after talking to you, I was like, and I think you're a very intuitive, high-level T. And, like, Jung, who created these original typologies, kind of like, when you really evolve, you can almost transcend the type. So mm. we can, but you kind of have to go through the journey of it to mm. kind of be able to transcend. So, so I feel like you're like, high functioning highly intuitive like feeling connected t well i think you but, can use the t thinking judging function in for spirituality so yeah. that what the t function is known for is efficiency and effectiveness it's like okay how, i'm at point a how do i get to point b and what's the quickest way possible well, i didn't have a lot of that. time to think on the track about like god is this gonna hurt his feelings if i cut him off right here or not yeah. <laughs> right. you just had to do it <laughs> yeah oh my god can you imagine <laughs> empaths on the track <laughs> that'd be a freaking nightmare i'd be like stacy i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i never done a conversation yeah. next to each other on the road I, I will say your I, did, that I, passed you. Yeah. I did have I do I do I can identify now a little bit through some of the more astrological work I've mm. done where the Libra rising in me and the balance and wanting things to be fair oh. I that did get in the way on track because yeah, I'm like I'm gonna treat you the way I want you to treat me wow. and you know what if you treat me like shit it's not in me to treat you bad it's just not in me it's not mm. fair and so it was hard for me to be a real dick because it wasn't fair. Yeah. And that's yeah. not how yeah. I wanted to be. Yeah. So I did have something get in the way of my dynamic, but it wasn't being an empath. Yeah. That's for damn sure. I yeah. just want to ask you. Do you really feel that, um, just checking in with you, do you feel Lucy in that? I was just about to say that. that. I was like, what does Lucy say about that? So yeah, just check in. Mm-hmm. That's funny. We both have our safety. She's the, yeah. Um, it's the, 
the that part of me that um, is more sensitive got shut down a lot. Like that part of me, that balance part of me got shut down a fair amount. And I uh, ignored, um, yeah, I ignored that that part of me. That's all I, that's all I really know. I think there's that. some integrity in that part. And so yeah. it's like, am I in, in it to win it and lose myself in the process mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. compromise my mm-hmm. values? Or am I mm-hmm. going to win this on my own Yeah, it feels like, is it winning mm-hmm. if it's under these certain conditions? Yes. Then I'm not yes. winning. Is it winning if, if I, I win cheat? Is it like winning that, if I then cheat is people? Is it a yeah. valuable win? Yeah. Right. It's level. not a real win. It's yeah, true maybe it's win. an ego win, yeah. but not a soul. Yeah, win. yeah, yeah. We got to it. We figured yeah. it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think what's fascinating thinking about the personality types and you guys particularly, and how you pair each other and, and complement each other and push each other to grow, is Danica. You use your T function towards spirituality. So, like the other day when you came to the barn, and we're like, okay, so we're gonna try to feel this feeling. You're like. Okay, let's like, what's the most efficient way I can get to this feeling? We're just gonna do it. And here we go. Where Stacy might take a moment to really feel, get in touch, first decipher through those surface level feelings of just the morning, because we're just feeling all the time. So it's like mm-hmm. every day it's this first decluttering process, mm. but then getting down to, okay, this is how I really feel. And then really locating, you know, if we're asking you to feel something you've been avoiding, you're like, oh, this is exactly where I'm feeling it. I can go straight into that and then feeling it in that way. So yeah. you, bo- you both are coming to the same conclusions, mm-hmm. doing the same type of work, but in different ways. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about the energetic work. Yeah. Like when you were like, can I do some energy work? I'm like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a yes, but then there's also, like for me, and this is maybe interesting, we didn't talk about it, the energetic work from what I experience completely I forgot to explain this part that I did have a whole dialogue like with myself mm-hmm. along with it like I was jumping in on all levels like there was you were doing the energy work you were doing energy work and grounding the room Stacy was grounding the room I was doing my own soul conversation and talking to my higher self about like what was going on what do I need to know what and it helped facilitate a very speedy process of working I bet that through two Your things. History we were talking to her probably just totally speeded the whole thing along because you were able to mm-hmm. kind of be like because we did two things. Mm-hmm. We didn't just do one. We did two releases, according to me. Yeah, I mean, according to the information that came through, there was two big releases of two totally different things. Yeah. Well, they were connected, but they were different things. Mm-hmm. And so, b- but yeah, I think we were working on all levels. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So many... Like I jump in from the mind standpoint too, though. I didn't just sit there and go. Like look at you yeah. know look at you Elisa and go oh, which I love that by right. the way because that brings you I always like it when someone's <clears throat> engaged and yeah they, yeah, uh, yeah, or, yeah I mean it can happen both ways I definitely can do healing stuff on people when they're more like well, what's happening but if sure it's nice when the person's participating and sure. active and like when your mind what's understands happening. what's going on it's a lot yeah. easier yeah and less scary mm-hmm. honestly because I think that's usually what happens if someone's like. I just cried suddenly. Why did, did you make me do that? And then there's like a whole like fake fear yeah. thing that could be active. But if they're participating, then their soul's like, take a breath. Now I knew exactly what was going on. I knew why yeah. I was crying. I was like, yeah. oh God, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I had all the answers to what happened yeah. before we were like, when we were done. Yeah. Like you didn't yeah. have to say a word about what came through. I knew everything that came through. Yeah. yeah. And I just see myself like a midwife of like then watching kind of, is there anything sometimes I was saying like beautiful, good job in this moment. Cause then I can feel like here comes a contraction. I just want to kind of like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, interesting. yeah, I, I would like, I'm just thinking about empaths out there. You know, as we started this yeah. conversation, Lisa whispered in my ear, she's like, this should be the show about empaths. So I was like, yeah, I've been waiting for a way in and I'm like, this is amazing. And I, and I think, yeah, Stacey, you're just such a beautiful example of that, of finding your strength as an empath. So I know this might be an intense question okay. and, and we can take it out <laughs> if it's too much. I already feel it, <laughs> yeah. Right now, yeah. Would you yeah. like me to tether in some, feel, yeah. some fire for you? Yeah, I got we'll, you. We'll tether you down here. Yeah. Uh, if you take a moment, and feel the impasse in the world. And if you imagine yourself when you were younger and were unaware of your true soul nature, does Ellie have a message that she wants to tell that younger version of yourself or those other people listening? You are seen heard and worthy 
end to continue being you. And there's love and compassion out there and there will be support. You just have to find the way. I mean, I think that's what I wish I would have heard when I was younger is that it's okay. And you are uniquely yourself and that is a gift. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. Mm. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys. I feel so much more prepared for life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody listening. We'll talk next Thank episode. You.